This is a demo of the key things you need to know in order to operate Zara Web Designer. Open the Designs Gallery. Click a folder to see the different page for each theme. Double click on a thumbnail to open that page. Down the left side are the main tools. And this one, that large arrow, is the main selector tool, which is used more than any other. With this tool you can select anything on the page and just drag on it to move it. The selected item is shown with these small black drag handles around the outside. And the status line, at the bottom of the screen, always tells you what object is selected and gives some hints as to what you can do. All the items on the page, the text, the photos and the graphics, we collectively refer to as objects. You can move, resize and rotate all objects the same way with the selector tool. If you drag on a corner handle, you can resize the selected object, like this. To rotate any object, you can either move the mouse pointer just inside the corner handles, the pointer changes like this, and then drag to rotate the object. Or you can click on an object a second time, and the corner handles change to indicate you can rotate by dragging. To delete any object, just click on it to select it, and then press the delete icon or the delete key. All operations are reversible. Just click the undo icon here, click and hold and you can undo all the way back to the beginning. To clear the selection, either just click on the grey background outside the page, or simply press the escape key. The status line will show nothing selected. To add to a selection, use the shift key. So for example, I click to select this one button. Hold down shift and click on the next, and the next, and now I have all three selected. So now I can move, resize, or delete them all as one. On most page designs, if you drag on the background, you'll find that you are in fact dragging a background rectangle under the text. You can see the status line says it's a rectangle, and the control handles appear around the object, as usual. Rectangles are slightly different, in that they show eight handles rather than the usual four. This is because you can drag on any side handle to change the width or height of the rectangle. If you drag on the top part of the web page, you will typically move the header background, like this. This is usually a group of different graphics and objects, as shown on the status line. Some objects, such as this photo, have a text repelling property. As you drag them, the text is repelled around the outside. The next most used tool is the text tool. Click to enable this, and now you can edit any text on screen by clicking on it and typing. All the normal word processing facilities are available and controlled with this set of controls here. You may notice that as you change tools, this bar changes. It's called the info bar and always shows the controls for the given tool. One of the most used functions is that of Web Preview. You can either select the Preview Website menu option, or just click this button, and this will pop up a basic web browser window showing you the final website. As you can see, it's identical to the appearance of the page in Web Designer. One difference is that as you mouse over the buttons, they highlight. Almost all links and buttons in Web Designer have this highlight effect, sometimes called a rollover effect. You can only see the rollover effect working in the web preview. This set of buttons are all important to Web Designer. The first one previews your website. The second one will export your website. This saves the HTML to your hard disk. The link icon controls, yes, you guessed it, web links, and is how you apply a link to a button, text, or any object. The next one brings up the Web Properties dialog. This dialog is central to Web Designer and controls a wide range of features such as giving names to pages, setting keywords, link colours, setting up your published details, and more. These two buttons export any selected item as a JPEG or PNG graphic. If you want to create some simple web graphics for use in other programs, these are the quick shortcuts for that. So for example, if I want to save this photo as a JPEG, just click to select it, and click the Export JPEG button. The last button of the group will publish your website to your web server. This is what puts it live on the web for all to see. 
I'll just touch briefly on photos. The best way to add a photo is to just drag and drop it from your Windows File Explorer, like this. This is now treated like any other object on the page. Click on it in the Selector tool and you can resize by dragging the corners as usual. This photo does not repel the text around it. If you want to make any object repel, just right click on it and select Repel Text Under. Now as you move it around the page, the text will constantly move out of the way. We like to call this liquid text because it flows around the objects. If you drop a photo on top of an existing one, it will replace it like this. These arrows you see allow you to resize and rotate the picture inside its frame, like this. In fact, you're using the Fill tool here, and with this tool you can click on any photo and adjust its size the same way. The colour line along the bottom of the screen has two parts. At the left end are theme colours for the page. As you hover over them, you see a pop-up name. To edit any theme colour, just click on the colour patch and choose Edit from the pop-up menu. This displays the colour editor. Along the bottom here is the Hue control. It shows all colours of the spectrum. Just try to select the hue you require. And you can immediately see the page colours changing as you do this. For a large multi-page site, all the pages will change together. For any selected hue, you can select any lighter or darker shade by dragging here. So here you can see what was orange has now become shades of blue. You can do the same for the other theme colours on the line. So here is theme colour 2, and I'll edit this to be pale blue, which goes well with the first blue. Looking at the other colours, there's a theme colour 3 in this design. And if you edit it, you'll see this changes all the button colours. I'll undo that change. There will typically be a colour called Panel Colour, and if I edit this one, you'll see this changes the background. This is not the whole background, just the rectangle panel behind all the text. The other diamond-shaped colours along here are just a fixed palette of different shades, which you can drag and drop onto the objects. You are not recommended to use these unless you're creating your own graphics. These are fixed, non-editable colours. So for example, I can drag and drop this on the panel here. I'll undo that change. So to use a few of the features I've shown you, I can edit this text here by first going to the text tool and then clicking on the text and editing it. I will select the text and change the font. You can see as I traverse the font menu, the text changes instantly. Going to the selector tool, I can move this, resize it, or rotate it. Using a new tool I've not shown, the shadow tool, I can just drag on the text to give it a soft shadow. I can adjust the shadow blur and transparency using these slider controls. One thing you might notice is that as I drag the heading around, it goes under other objects. There is a stacking order for all the items on the page. You can adjust the stacking order using the Arrange menu. So to bring this heading to the top, I select Arrange, Bring to Front, and now you can see it's on top of the other objects. Finally, the two most useful mouse controls, which once you get used to them, you'll use all the time, are that you can push a page around instead of using the scroll bars. Just press and hold the mouse scroll wheel and push. To zoom in or out, just hold the control key down and use the scroll wheel to zoom. Now I know there's a lot to take in in this short demo, but I do recommend you go through the movie again, perhaps pausing it and trying each of the different features that we've demonstrated.